Okay, let's try that again. This has happened to me before. This is the first time I think I've live streamed on my new phone. I got the iPhone 8. It's going to come on and start talking. Let's mute that. Stop that. It's not great, but it's a little board, little pieces. So this is a victory lost with um, by MMP. I played a victory denied many years ago. Um, and I picked this one up just kind of complete the, well, I don't know if it's completing the series, but you know, I got the series. And if anyone pops on, let me know if you can hear me. Um, actually, I can tell if someone could hear me. I can just listen on my computer. Not all the counters are uh, cut yet, so I'm going to do that occasionally. So like right now, I'm going to cut the headquarters chits. So how this game works, those of you who don't know, uh, designed by a Japanese man, Tetsuya Nakamura. Um, and it was originally, I think, in the Japanese war game magazine years ago. And MMP got it. Uh, Adam Starkweather developed it. And then Nicholas Scooby. So some of my favorites in the business uh, just worked on this game. It's probably a little hard to tell the map. There's a lot of glare from the lights. I apologize for that. But I got to see. Boys got to see. And I, I keep trying to get non-reflective. I think I'm going to have to go beyond my local store to find really good non-reflective stuff. I'll probably really mute the map, too. Um, so these are our divisions and core. So core Russian tanks, mechanizer core German are mainly divisions. This is uh, Ukraine 42-43. So Stalingrad's kind of ending, I think. I don't know that history really great. Um, so here are the Russians, and this is the Russian counterattack. And then you're going to Manstein's backhand blow, which happens a little bit later here. So basically what's trying to happen is you're trying to get 30 points to make an auto vic automatic victory or more victory points at the end of turn nine. Can you see, you can't really see the reinforcements there. Let me see if I can move this, uh, move my camera around. Not too shaky. It'll get a little shaky. I apologize. So there are the reinforcements in the turn. They'll be coming on. Uh, that's Stalingrad there, that gray spot over there. I'll highlight that in just a moment. We've got two viewers. Thanks for watching all. Hey, Devin, what's up, man? Um, Stalingrad pocket here. These you cannot use until turn five, so that nothing's happening there. Um, I mean, a lot's happening there, but you can't use the railroad tracks for supply for the Russians or for reinforcements. So they can't use anything, but once it happens, then they can start using them. So... Let's go over a couple of the basics. So again, the Soviets are trying to push the Germans back. As you can see, there's a lot of weakness here. See, there's a lot of red. We got, um, I believe it's Hungarians are here. Some German. No, Hungarian. Yeah, and some German. Hungarian and then Italian. But look at that. There's like one, two, three. They're spaced out for zone of control. Zone of, con zone of controls is cost an additional two to move in. So it costs one to move into a clear hex and then add two more. That's entering and exiting. So if you're exiting, add two, and then the one you're getting into. So they're, I'd call them sticky. You don't have to stop, but there, most of the movement here is four. There are some sixes. And I think I saw an eight, but that might be, a, yeah, the headquarters are 10. Oh, there's a Panzer with 10. Um, those purple ones, I'm not sure. They're Romanian. So when a Romanian uh, activates headquarters, that, well, we'll get into that in a second. Sorry, I jumped ahead. So a few things about this game. So that's what's happening here. The Soviets are going to try to move in. These are not units. These are command. I'll show you that in just a minute. Soviets are trying to move in. Wipe them out. You get five points for each victory city. Rostov, Stalino, Kharkov. One, I'm going to try that one, and that one's Zaporiz. Uh, anyway, sorry, um, Russian speakers. Rostov and Kharkov, I'm Kharkov, I'm confident of, Stalingrad. Trying to move in, take the cities back, and eliminate units. So it's five points for each city, three points for German mechanized, and one point for everything else. 
one point for mechanized. I have that a little off. And then the Soviets are one victory point. So right now the Germans are leading 25 to zero because they own all five cities. Um, what else? So that's that. You can tell it's a one map game. Not very many chits. It's one counter sheet. Um, it's kind of cool. They let you either use silhouettes for mechanized or the standard symbols. I just use standard symbols. Let's look at, uh, if we can, let's see if I can focus in on that. Like I said, I've never used my iPhone 8 for streaming, and it looks like I can't. So oh, there we go. So that's Hungarian headquarters. So what's going to happen is um, at the beginning of each turn, this is a chit pull activation. At the beginning of each turn, uh, if you look on the turn record chart, it'll tell me how many command chits I can put in for the axis. Sorry for the squeak. In the case of turn one, I believe it's three. And the date is December 17th, 1942. Um, so it's about 10 days a turn. It's 10 days a turn. I told you the units is about 10 kilometers a hex. So, um, so I'm going to put three of these command chits into into a chit pull. Right now I have five. I will be getting reinforcements, and I'll get more later. So then what I want to do is each one, so like, let's say fourth panzer. Let me find fourth panzer. I probably shouldn't have hid my headquarters. I wasn't very smart. Um, setup is pretty easy. It's showing me black. Is that accurate? Four panzer. No, I said that. So I'm allowed. I'm, I'm, I have 4th Panzer, Romanian 3rd Army, Italian 8th Army, Hold It, and Hungarian 2nd Army. So here's Hold It. So when I pull that chit, I can activate this headquarters. He can activate any unit within 6 X's. It says here 6 and a 10. The 10 in his movement and the 6 is his command radius. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So over to here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Over to here. He cannot command six. Well, actually, this major river here. Zone of controls don't affect radius. Well, but I can also command fourth Panzer. So if I put fourth Panzer and hold it, these all I could command these. It seems like a lot to command, but I could have hold it command a little bit. Now a major river, I can only command the first the 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 hex immediately following the, the major river. There's something with bridging and not. I'll have to check that out in just a minute. So anyway, that's what happens. They pull the hold it. Any any unit. So a unit can activate multiple times per turn. So that's kind of cool. Um, so for example, if I hold it, activates these all here, and I put fourth Panzer in here, he can activate these guys again. So why would I want to activate them? So right now, I've got hold it, which commands these. So he just goes up to. All right, so it goes up to here. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's and it's the radius that commands at the beginning of the turn. I can move them later. So right now he just commands these guys here. He doesn't command that many people really. He, he can't command another um, headquarters. Um, in victory denied, I think you could chain things together. I don't think you can do that here. Um, so these two German headquarters can activate anyone. Um, my Hungarian 
can only activate Hungarian and German. Italian can only activate Italian and German. And Romanian can only activate Romanian and German. To show that the cooperation wasn't there among the uh, allies in the Axis team. Axis team. Uh, let's see, the big EAA. Great series of games, the A victory. Uh, yeah, I've only got uh, victory lost, victory denied. There is a victory awaits on pre-order right now with MMP. Um, did I pre-order that one? I did pre-order that one. Um, so it's a big mapper. It's two to three big maps, so people are kind of complaining about that because it's a big old east front one. Um, the victory awaits. There's a lot of pessimism that it will or will not get made, so I don't know. Okay. Um, and so my Hungarian, pardon me, my Hungarian uh, headquarters is up here. My Italian headquarters is here, and I'm allowed to put three of these in. This is very strong down here, and these guys are kind of out here in the middle. On turn one, there's going to be reinforcements coming in here from the Russians, and I assume they can come in any of these hexes. So, I think I want to pull these guys back, but I probably don't want to pull them all the way back to here. I don't know why I wouldn't maybe start pulling them back to Rostov, but that would allow these guys just to move. Do I want to do that? That's a great question for Mr. Todd. I think I do. Right now, they're not in any sort of defensive terrain. They're not blocking, they're not in any cities. Now, you do want to block railroad hexes because that affects reinforcements later. I think people have complained about the railroads here. I don't know. I, I don't. I can't complain about them because I've never played it, so I can tell you. But basically, a reinforcement. When my reinforcements come in at the uh, at the end of the turn phase, and reinforcements come, let's say I've got the German, and Germans have reinforcements, which they do. I can bring them into any railroad hex out of zone of control of a. Um, out of a, anyway, I can bring them. So if I, I have these re reinforcements down here, I could bring them all the way up to here, here even. I could bring them up to here. And because there's no zone of control. So you can really transport uh, reinforcements very quickly up to the front. So as the German player, I really want to keep guys on, at least have zone of control on all the railroads. Because let's say, for example, I left. Well, okay. Um, well, let's say Stalingrad was open. And that's why Stalingrad matters, see? Because the only Soviet railroad is here and here. So Soviet reinforcements are pretty much, that's pretty interesting. So they can only be placed along this line and up to here. Wow. So I got turn three. I got a ton of reinforcements. So this... If I'm reading it right, wow, that's crazy. Because Stalingrad, there's no train railheads coming off this map. So they're all going to be way the heck back here. So this side's going to be super strong. So when you're playing solo, you got to kind of think, would, uh, you know, would this German player think of that, whatever. But here I am. So I think as a Soviet player... All right, so that's that. So that's how reinforcements work. So... Let's say, for example, that this is working, and I had no Germans here. Let's say these Germans weren't here. And that reinforcement phase, if I hadn't been paying attention, I could bring a Soviet reinforcement all the way to these control cities and drop them off in all these cities because <laughs> the railroad connects. So it is huge. So really, i got to remember that over here, too, because they could just go all the way over here. So, wow. So the question is, is do I want to... I mean, look at it. I got a lot of... This is Russia, man. Do I want to keep those guys up there, man? This is awesome. So, can tr create those. So, I almost think I want to bring these guys because there's no major... Major rivers are a big deal, but minor rivers are some deal. So, maybe activate the Romanians, kind of bring these guys back. Um... This guy isn't commanding much. I probably should have done this offline, but maybe it's good for me to hear me through. Hey, ID Jester, what's up, man? So, uh, 
Big E A A A N A. I don't know if you have a channel. If you do, let us know. But I know original grog guard Devin does. Check his channel out. War Games ID Jester does video and board. Uh, a lot of video games right now, but war games, video war games, and other many other things. ID Jester does a lot of stuff, sports, everything. I don't have all the counters uh, clipped. I do have the counters punch, but not all clipped. Oh yes, ID Jester and I were just watching a game at uh, Al Red Sox fan has got a baseball game going. Uh, Al Red Sox fan's great. Whenever you go on, he supports your channel. He's really good about that. So go check him out if you like sports simulation. He's a sports dude, as you can tell by his title, Al Red Sox fan. I just mentioned I was cutting counters out, got it finished, and came over here to start. It's probably going to be mainly me talking through the the strategy thing, and because it's kind of helping me uh, just do it out loud. Um, you guys have any ideas? Let me know. Especially, uh, well, I think ID. You said you played in Big E. You've played, so if you got any ideas, please let me know. I can try out. So that's that's the Germans. OK, so the Germans get to pick three of the first one out of five. They'll get more reinforcements at the end of for turn one. OK, the Ger the Russians, they have uh, six. They have 12 counters to choose from. But here's an interesting thing. At the beginning of the game, the Soviets will pick the uh, Stavka uh, shit counter. And that's always in there. And that allows you to activate all your headquarters, which is pretty crazy. I need to make sure all my headquarters are seen. I need to make sure I can see those. That allows you to activate all the headquarters. So that'll come out once a turn. Well, I have to pick five more headquarters that can enter the game that I'll use as my primary commands, and I'll, the rest of them aren't going to be used. So I'm going to use they make a suggestion in the book to do, because this is what Stalin picked, and I'm not really sure what that means, so I need to check that out. First guard, second guard, third guard, third tank, and fifth tank. So I'm going to use those five in my cup. Well, no, I'm sorry. Those five are in my like reserve and in my inactive command sheets at the beginning of every turn. I'm going to pick Skav Stavka always. And then I'm going to pick three to activate that turn three to put in the cup. So in the first turn, so all these other Soviet ones are going to go away for the game. Let's put them over here, not in the inactive because I might accidentally pick them. They'll go upside down over here, and I will never pick them. Stavka will go in the cup, and then I have to decide who to activate. I really want to activate these guys over here. So second guard army for sure. Is that just Stavka over there? It looks like it. Oh, that's 5th tank army. Wait, oh, that's 51st army. So now I'm curious... Do those headquarters get to move? Yeah, I definitely want to activate 5th Tank Army too. So they're going to go. So I'm going to be pretty heavy on this side, I think. But it would be nice to start wrecking on these guys. But knowing I'm going to get reinforcements up there, I might wait. So I might really concentrate my attack up there. I think I sit over here, maybe pull these guys back. I mean, it's pretty weak armies here. I got a one attack factor. So I got two attack factors against two. So it's a one to one. So this one, um, wow, this is a brain burner already. This is pretty crazy. I'll tell you what, when I played a victory tonight, you can go check my videos of that. I really had a good time playing that. And I just did it. I think I just shot it in like, um, I didn't have this streaming uh, technology, so I just filmed it occasionally, which I probably will do on this sometimes, too. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is awesome. Um, so you got to keep your units close to your command because if you can't command them if they're not in command. And, and if a headquarters end up with no units around them within their command race, they are either eliminated or relocated. I think they're relocated. They might be eliminated. So um, I've got to find out when, head, if how headquarters are activated if they don't have their their command. If they just move during the turn. But I don't know why I'd need them. You just don't want to lose them, I guess. Uh, okay. Whew, boy. I'm trying to make.
make this uh, keep this entertaining for you guys uh, watching here. Who I'm going to choose? I really want to push the heck out of this side here, kind of get this unbunched up here. So we got fifth tank army and second guard army over here. I don't. I did not. Do not have that command. I'm definitely gonna have to make sure I didn't bury it in my uh, headquarters here. Third guard army. Did I keep them? I did. So maybe I want to kind of push those guys around and kind of do some command here, a little bit of combat. Um, get these guys across the, the, the it's probably halved attacking, so it's probably one to one, but maybe I can get these guys pushed back, really attack this. Are they in a city? It looks like it. So oh, they're across a minor river, son of a gun. Uh, okay, so Big E says, timing of how the chits get pulled can dictate the strategy of each side. Zone of controls can be the German's best friend as they use a controlled withdrawal to allow the German units to get through Rostov. Okay, yeah, yeah, so I want to keep that open. And then I digested, wish I didn't have to go, but it's late already. Yeah, we'll watch the rest tomorrow at work. Have a good night. Hey, thanks, ID. Yeah, it is late, and we got another kid starting school tomorrow, so... I'm just going to stay on here for probably 30 more minutes. I'd love to get started playing here. So a couple other points about the game. Um, all right. Maybe before I do that, I got to take a breath here. Let me pick my command shits. So for the Russians, I've got second guard, second guard, and fifth tank. I'm going to do third guard as well. This might be kind of cool to get first guard going because I got some weak spots with the Italian. So let's do fifth guard. Can I do all that? No, I can't. I think I will switch out third for first. Okay, so I've got. Okay, I got a quick kick in the, quick in, kick in the camera there. All right, I got to find me a cup. I got one over here. I was using for Montelemer. Switch that out. So, so Montelemer is sitting over there by Compass Games. It's a little deeper than this game. This one's got 14 pages of rules. So if you want kind of an intro war game that covers a big area. Gives you that mass feel. A victory loss, a victory denied are great systems. Kind of like some of the storm over ones. You kind of get a cool big picture. Fairly straightforward. The rules are pretty much move, fire, overrun. The biggest thing is, is this chit pull system. And choosing the command. That's a big part of the game. Um, so I'm going to put these all in the cup. Oh, while I'm at it, let me cut, cut them here. All right, so what is the other cool thing about it? So there's only one counter sheet. Um, there are color coded and all the units where they go are marked on the map. So that is awesome for setup. Um, it goes fairly quickly. Even if you have them stored all together in a big mess, all you have to do is find their color, find their color on the map and put it on. I'm not clear how I'm going to uh, store this yet because I really hate to use one of my 20... 20 uh, cube, uh, 20 box or opening pocket uh, flat trays from GMT. I may see if I, I know I have um, some smaller Plano I might use. It just doesn't really take much. I could keep them all in bags, but I don't have the little baggies available right now. So um, sorry for the squeak. I need to oil that. This is the corner cutter from Lam Oregon Lamentations. I bought Lamentations. Lament, what is it? Lamentation, Lam <laughs> laminating? Lamentations, that's from the Bible. Um, anyway, uh, it's really nice. This one's one I bought used from a guy. It's not the deluxe, but it's fine. All right, so these two um, go in the inactive chit. I would put them upside down. Um, that's the only thing that's gonna be, I'm gonna have to remember who I activated as a German or as each player. Not that big a deal. So they all go in the bottom of the cup. Rock Chalk Jayhawk. Sorry for those who don't like them. Uh, okay, so I know Hold It and Fourth Panzer are going in. 
because I really want to reinforce this. Now, here's where it's, it's hard to be a player. So think about that as a playing this two-player. You don't know who they're activating. Pretty cool. Um, but very tenseful. It's awesome. All right. So um, all my guys are behind a major river here. So I'm not going to worry about that. Um, are these guys on that side of the river? No, they're not. Okay. I might be might be nice. I almost think Italian. Because then I could spread these guys out. But see, they're behind that line too. They're all kind of starting behind this major river, so I really don't want to move those guys. Um I'm gonna go with Romanian, I think. Just keep this side strong. So I'm gonna put Romanian in there. So these three, Romanian. Hold it and fourth panzer. I'll get those other guys. So then you'd put them upside down over here so they don't know who you picked. I think I'm ready to start. So set up command shits, go through the expanded sequence of play. I think I'm going to actually get a turn, or not a turn, but okay, let's see here before I start. Storm over, yeah. I don't have storm over no uh, Normandy. I haven't much heard much about it. Um, I've only played storm over Stalingrad. And I, again, I had a great time. It doesn't really solo perfectly well because it's got cards, but it was a great time. I had a great time. I do have Storm over Arnhem. I just never can get past. There's, I, I'm having a hard time getting over the hump for the rules, but it's just me. Uh, has some great player aid and turn tracking sheets to track which commands activated. Oh, okay, that's interesting. I laminated my player aid charts and use dry erase markers. Okay, I did see a scoring sheet there, um, Big E, but uh, it was wrong. Unless there has been a rata, the book says, oh, I should have looked at that. I think I downloaded the rules. Yeah, it says five points for each city, three for each German mechanized unit, uh, each German non-mechanized is one, and each Soviet mechanized is one axis. But I didn't, I didn't print it out because it was wrong. It said 10 for each city and three for each mechanized. I was like totally, or not three. I might have said three or five. I don't know. It was way off. I never laminate things. I always just put them in sheet protectors. I did download this one. It's kind of the special rules here. So, yeah, Storm Over Stalingrad was really fun. So, Storm Over Stalingrad, everybody... This level of rules, maybe even less. I think it's got eight pages, and it's it's uh, area activation. So it's not it's not hexes. It's areas. So like you'd command this area and area, and you. It's it's if two people knew the rules, you could play it pretty fast. Fast. So command range, major river, one hex across, unbridge. Okay, so bridge you can go further. May snake across bridges. Ignores zonal control movement. Okay. There is. Let's look at. All right. What else do I need to see? Okay. So here's the. I don't know if you can see it over here. Can you see? Yeah, you can see it. Oh, there's a big glare on there. I apologize. Um, so one movement point for clear. One movement point for rough. There's a shift in combat. Towns are one movement point, one sh run ratio shift, two shifts on ratio. So if you're two to one, two to one, three to one, and it says two shifts, you go to one point five to one. I'll explain that when I do it. Uh, other terrain in hex on roads or half movement point if using strategic movement. I'll explain later. Uh, major river takes all your movement allowance. You have to start next to it. Attack strength halved. Minor river plus one movement point. Attack strength halved. Even across bridges, water, not allowed, not allowed. Rail line, other train and hex, none. Impassable hex side, not allowed, not allowed. And supply source. So you can go out of supply in the game. Supply is super easy. Basically just trace hexes. I don't, I don't see how people, you don't, you're only going to get out of supply when you're surrounded. Zone of controls matter. I think we're ready. I, I said that a few minutes ago. I apologize. All right, let's go here. I have enjoy, I have Storm over Dian Bin Fu. I'm thinking about selling it just because... Oh, we have a new watcher too. 
Land Surfer 66. Hey, man. I have DMB and few. I'm just not that interested in that air time. So I, I bought it for a really inexpensive, and I'm going to sell it, I think. Um, it's still in shrink. First chit pulled. Fourth Panzer Army. Put that down here. Well, put that here. And so they have a radius of six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to there. One, two, three. Oh, can't do that. So in uh, a victory lost, I'm sorry, victory denied, you can chain stuff. I don't think you can do that here. So I need to look that up. Yeah, it, I think actually uh, the Fierce Fight series. Are there other victory games besides a victory denied and a victory lost? Okay, already looking at rules. Command execution. Yep, can't activate HQs. They, the Axis have something like Stafka called the Manstein Chit. They actually get two of these later on. They get one in turn three and one in turn five. That's interesting to me. Hmm. Except for Manstein, you have to put in there like a regular counter. So what do I want to do with these guys? I feel like I want to move them back because th these guys are going to, there's reinforcements coming here in turn one. So if I move that, I can move him one, two, three. And I have to find out where they can enter here because if they can go this way, man, they're going to get all the way around. And you want to keep your guys spread out like every other one because it's on a control. Maybe even, you could maybe even do two gaps of two like here. You can just, it just allows you to squeeze more defenders around you. So, sorry that you have to watch this part here. I need to find out when they can move to. I wonder if when I move them, I should cut them while I'm doing it. You probably don't need to see that. Oh, wait, I won't do that while I'm doing this. One, two, two, one, two, three, four. Okay. None of these guys are going to be able to get over these things here. So here. Mm, awesome. I wonder if I need to strengthen some of this up. So one, I'm really, I'm already doing a back. I'm already pulling back here. I don't think I want to pull these guys back and they can't command them anyway. So is there a town. So there is a town there. So I probably don't want to leave that stay there. I got a gap there. Um, second division there. So the color coding does not matter. Code, color coding is only helped to set up. Yeah, no doubt, Biggie. The, the rivers are huge. Um, but remember, to, I got to keep these railroad tracks covered with zones of control. Only two. The cool thing here is stacking is pretty limited. Only two units per hex, plus a headquarters. I wonder if I. Yeah, 
I'm really wanting to kind of establish here, but man, this this makes me nervous down here, dude. Go on this road and get over here. I got to get back to Rostov, seriously. Um, I got to control that flow of the troops there. Um, so I guess I'm just kind of trying to get back here. So I'm going to put this guy back. So if I, so half, one, one and a half. So I think stay there. I could actually move him kind of. Get him over here. One and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half there. Yeah, you guys may be watching this going, what the heck is this guy doing? Two, three. I feel like I want to keep a little bit like a defensive line here for a second. And spread these guys out a little bit. Bring these guys in this city. Bring like that. I'm not counting because I'm not moving that far. You know, keep those guys like that for now. Now, the question now is when can I move my command? Need to make sure everyone's in command at all times. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's the hard, that's the biggest thing. Supply is a deal, but keeping command raised is huge. So when can command move? I'm going to assume he can move any time in his turn. So, six, five, four, three, two, one. So, I can go all the way back here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oop, don't want to do that. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, okay. So, keep that there like that. I don't like that, dude. All right, that's fourth bands. Our first one done. Storm over Normandy, yeah. But it, and you can't get the magazine. It's sold out. So that tells me people like that game, or at least wanted it. I don't see anyone playing it, but hold it. Hold, hold it. Hold it. I wish my son was here. He's, he speak, he's been four years of German. Hold it. Uh, right. So same, similar thing here. I'm thinking I want to kind of withdraw into these towns here and behind these lines. These Soviets here, boy, that, that, they're going to break through. So I wonder if I just want to move. So who, who's with in command? One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So, oh, well, let's see, here's the deal there. Looks like I almost have a good defensive line there now. Do I do it? Maybe I don't want to switch. I could do some attacking. Oh, shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. I forgot a huge thing here. Ah, caramba. The Soviet player secretly selects the Sovka at ship. Okay, blah, blah, blah. The Axis player secretly selects his. All the selected... All the selected command chips are placed in the cup. Shoot, I made a big mistake here. All right. Turn one, special combat segment. The Soviet player activates one HQ of his choice, even one whose corresponding command chip is not in there, and they can perform a normal combat segment. Attack enemy units in advance after combat. No command chip, whatever is done. Then you start drawing. All right. Well, it's good I did this because there was no combat here. So it's just combat. So this is great. So who do I want to attack here as a Soviet before I move these guys? Because now I'm moving guys that are close to them. So I need to, what did I do here? I don't think I moved anybody, did I? Oh yeah, I moved him back and forth. Okay, so right now, who do the Soviets want to attack? I pick one unit, one command. So we got five against, so here we go, five against two, which is going to be the whole one and a half. There, there's no air and artillery in this. In a victory denied, they add air and um, 
artillery. Now, Victory Night is kind of cool. So you can chain, you add air and artillery. So there's some extra things you can do. Oh, Countertech, what's up, man? You know, you're on here. So hi and goodbye. Yeah, I would agree. Great beer and pretzel games. Uh, okay, what time is it? All right. I forgot about it. So where do the Soviets want to use their turn? Do I want to use Sixth Army here? I feel like I'd want to use one that I didn't put in my chit in my pool there, right? To kind of this is so weak right here. Um, the Italians are looking pretty sorry here, and they are across the river. They aren't, so they'd be attacking at one, four, at seven to one. That's tempting, and this is tempting. And that would be one to one. Shoot. So the only people that could attack would be these guys here. And one, two, three, four, five. So up to here. So I might be want to do this one too. Okay. All right, let's start up here and let's do this. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Halved four to two, so it's two to one. And we'll roll on the, the dice here. Let's roll red. Two to one, three, nothing, no effect. Okay, great. All right, so good start. I activated first guard army. So I need my little. Uh, that's going to happen though with those major rivers. This shows why they're so good at defense. All right, I'm having a little trouble here. Let's uh, get a breath. That's why they need to be cut, everybody. Cut those corners. All right, so these guys, let's try it again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, same thing, two to one. Need a defender retreat. They have to move closest to their um, they just retreat one. They can move in separate directions. They just have to move one. So I guess I'll just move them both back here. I might as well move them like that. These guys get to advance one, so I can put two units in there. So one of those guys. Now here, he's at one, I think I said this one, so seven to one, pretty high. Uh, I, I will get a result, a one is a defender retreat two. I have to move toward a supply source. So one, two, one, two, space it out. I think that means they get to advance to, but let me check. Mech units may not advance twice if first or second X is unbridged. Enemy zone control ignore. So mechs get to, but these neither one are mechs, so everyone gets to advance one. So it'd be nice to get this guy across that river. So I'm going to put him in there and one of my guards in there. Your first, so that's that's pretty good. Kind of pushed him back, started bunching a hole in the line. Okay, and then I pulled out, hold it, hollered. Sorry, hollered. And time. Okay, what do we got here? 
Hello, everyone. Hey, Al Red Sox fan. I guess your game's over. Who won? Uh, welcome. So, Al Red Sox fan, lots of get baseball game going on there. Counterattack's got good videos. Got lots of good guys uh, who video makers. Big E, do you make videos? Once Russia gets past some terrain issues, the north, the lesser Axis allies are a bit weak. Um, do you guys prefer the traditional NATO symbols or tank silhouettes? I went with traditional NATO just because it felt cool. I don't know. I like silhouettes too, though. And the scuba usually does really cool detail on it. So uh, I might use I might use them some other time. But I'd use them if they definitely use them if they had like the color drawing and all that. But it's fun to use a NATO. Um, oh, old soldier, another guy. Man, we got lots of viewers tonight. Guys. It's a little surprising on a Sunday night. So thanks for joining us, old soldier. Uh, I think it depends on the game. A large game with high counter density. I prefer the NATO. I love this game just to appreciate the military genius of Eric von Meinstein. Um, I prefer silhouettes, but I do have games with NATO symbols. Yeah, I, I, I don't really, it doesn't, that doesn't affect whether or not I buy or like or enjoy a game. I'm a very visual guy. I play miniatures. I play mainly squad level because I like to, I can see it and picture it, but it doesn't matter. Hold it. What am I doing here? Now I'm debating whether or not I should have put these guys in here because I'm like, I kind of like, Except for maybe moving this guy. Can he even reach over there? One, two, three, four, five, six. Just out of rage. Ugh, arg. I'm kind of tempted to move this guy like this. He's still at the river. Um, just because. I don't know. But then that allows him to come up there. My oh, gosh, I'm like, is that even a wise decision? I'm just wondering maybe if I'd come back here. Kind of start pulling back my line. Let them come up there. But it almost seems too quick. He's going to attack me at one and a half to two, so he can't even attack that. You can't attack if it goes um, below one to one, which is that would be. I think I might have made a bad decision on that, except for I could, I mean, that's attack crossing a minor. Everyone's attacking across a river, right? So uh, this is why the, the drawing, I almost would have, as a German, rather this had happened after I, I don't think i want to attack either because i you know this would be one to i couldn't do that one and uh, i couldn't do any of those attacks so i don't have any attacks either and i could move my move these guys up here and maybe put a dink in those it would be uh uh 10 it'd be five to three which would be three into five is one Three, that's a two, and that's six. So it'd be one and a half to one. There's a chance of getting an attacker result. And I have to roll a roll of five or six to make them do something. Um, if I attack here, again, it'd be 11. Now you got double stacked here. Hmm. <laughs> one, two, three, four, man. See, it'd be kind of cool because if they had defeated him, they'd come in, then I could go up there. I might just push up here like this. I'm going to back these guys up a little stronger. Uh, I think to get more use out of these guys, I might move this guy here. Now I've got a broader range of thing. I'm tempted to move this guy back here, but, oh, man, i got a town I'm defending. So terrain accumulates. So... It's half, and then the town is a shift down. Oof. Yeah, you say you like the genius of man staying? Mind, mind scene? Muzzle paint? What the heck, man? So look at these people watching. Sort of hard to see the board zoomed out. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I could zoom in. You're not going to be able to see a lot of detail, though. I apologize for that. Um, I don't have, like, a good overhead view. Where all the action is. Sorry about the glare over there on that side. It's going to be kind of blurry too, I bet. Lighting all funky. Look at that yellow tint. It's pretty crazy, man. I got so many viewers tonight. I can't believe it, guys. This is awesome. Um, I could probably. Let's try something else. Let's just experiment a little here, guys, if you're all comfortable with that. Let's check out the view. So I'm using my new iPhone 8 to stream here and not a webcam. It just was easier to set up for this quick play tonight. Let's see if I can maybe, it's mostly actions over here. 
I can stand to the side. You get to get, see a view of my messy stuff here. I'll have to move this camera because this is my wife works her business down here. Oh, it's selling for, that's a good price. So now I need to zoom back out a little bit. Sorry about that one big glare dot there. It's this, uh, it's this light fixture. <laughs> it's a really cool light fixture. My wife's a lighting designer, so we get some cool fixtures here. But you do get that little sun glare right there. Gosh, it's not like it's like they weren't thinking about us gamers. How rude! Yeah, it's a little better. I had moved it over there because I thought I'd be over here working, but I can go on the side here. I don't have to work from the. Um... This is an old air hockey table, by the way. All right, so let me go for a few more minutes here. Maybe get maybe, maybe I can get the first turn done. Let's check it out. I'm not going to do any attacks with Holland. Um, second guard up. Um, yeah, Case Blue next week. Yeah, right. Um, I did see one for sale, or uh, there was someone was giving one away to pay it forward, and it was. It weren't that many people participating, and I was tempted. I, I really wasn't tempted. That game was so huge. All right, so I do actually have a question here. So second guard army is commanded. So that's these guys. Turn one, place 28 here during the reinforcement. Okay, during reinforcement, those guys go here. Okay. Well, I'm definitely going to be moving up. Second guard army, we got a lot of moving to do. This could take a minute. First uh, Russian command that comes up, a second guard. So uh, definitely going to move up. Uh, bam. Oh, yeah, they do have these out-of-command markers to kind of just mark out who's not in command so you can remember. So two, three, four. It's kind of where you can snake around. I don't know if railroads count as that or not. But uh, one, one, two, three, four, five. So kind of like, God, do those guys not? All right, I'm going to have to look at that. I know these guys all do. So one, two, three, four. I probably want to bring this guy here. Because of retreating. Sorry, guys, I'm going to go quiet here a little bit as I'm counting this out. So can this command? I don't know why I even need this command. I don't really. I can just leave them behind. This guy's dead. Um, oh, shoot. Oh, man, I totally forgot about this. One, two, three. And then to move in there is another one. So he couldn't even move in there uh, because of the zone of control thing. So... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He could move in there. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Well, shoot, man. Where'd that guy come from? 91. He could do it. One, two, three, four, five. Dang. 
so it costs, remember, it's an additional two, an additional two to move into a zone of control plus the hex cost. So third guard army, let's move this guy back, 342, third guard. And where'd he come from? He was there. Third guard, I went one, two, three, four. He's fine there. That's another reason to keep guys up there. Holy mackerel. They, um, that zone of, freaking zone of control. Chad, no one's going to be able to get with this in, within this guy's reach. What the blank? One, two, three, four. Dude, he can. Cost three to move in there. Crazy. Nice. Gotta remember that for all these guys, too. You gotta figure out this whole across the river thing, too. Because I can go across that. It says it can snake around rivers, but. One, two, three, four. Man, this blows. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that guy can move all the way down there. I gotta make. I gotta get my commander up there too. He's only got a move in a four. That's fascinating. One two three four. One two three four. One two three. One two three. One. Two, three. Oh, I can't do it. Pardon me, sorry guys, I'm counting out here. Four, four, and four. This commander is only five, so I gotta be careful not to spread these guys out too much. One, two, three, four, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. I think this is all one hex. I'm guessing, and I can reach that hex in five. One, two, one, two, three, four. Okay. All right, so I got so I could command this guy. So I could attack these guys. I can move. Um, shoot, where was he? He was here. I got to figure out that river thing. Go one. So he was here. One, two, three, four. Three, four, five. Uh, what do we got here? Fire Weaver. My goodness, who are, who are all you people watching? This is awesome. Um, hey, what's up, Fire Weaver? What's going on? Uh, muzzle paint. Uh, good. I'm glad the picture's better. I think units can be commanded by other HQs as long as they are in range of command. I could be wrong, though. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. I'm going to have to probably be a rule thing I'll look up when I'm done um, tonight before I go to sleep or something, which needs to be soon. Oh, man. It does need to be soon. Um, but I do need to check this. He's out of command range because of the Unbridged River, Major River, Hickside. So one, two, three, one, two, three. Oh, here, I guess I can. Here's an example. You can download this uh, rule book from MMP. So I can't reach that one up top there because it's, um, 
that river hex side, you can see his command is four, but one, two, three he normally would. So you can bridge the bridge. I'm just like, see, a guy reaches way over there. So it, it's basically a circle, but I'm not quite clear how it reaches over the roads. So one, two, three, one, so one, two, huh, like this one here, I'm just like, so so it's one, two, three, four. So it's only always oh, so only four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I see. So you kind of are counting one, two, three, four. He's just out of range, period. He's just out of range. So if he was there, he could be. Okay, this is a pretty good diagram. You might have to make a little bit of judgment call. This is the kind of thing where it's better to play with someone else to kind of help get some ideas. So so my command radius is one, two, three, four. So it's all these units here. He's within command and the, the road is there. So I think I can command all those guys. So I wanna get these threes up here. I couldn't fight with those guys because they're not within command. So to move there, so it's one. Yeah, so I can move in there. I'm going to keep that two back. All right, so I got one combat I can do out of all that. So you guys who've played this before, Oh, yeah, sorry, Fire Weaver. I should let you people know that, um, especially when I'm on this long. A victory loss by MMP. A victory lost by MMP, Multi Man Publishing Company. So you can look up Multi Man Publishing, you'll find it. Uh, someone was saying up here 30 bucks. Um, well worth it. Pretty simple game. 14 pages of rules um, to go. All right, well, that's all the movement I can do. So I've got one combat to do. So all these guys are going to be halved. So it's three plus three is six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So they're five at to three. Three into five is that one hand. Look at that. Blech. One and a half. So it's not much going to happen there. One, two is bad. Five, six is good. Four. Nothing. Nothing happens. It costs two extra movement to move into uh, zone of control. So I couldn't even move. I had not enough movement to move there, but it's good. I push forward, but it does remind me that the importance of the zone of control in defense as well. Um, do need to be careful here that I don't get some German sneaking past me up, up on here. So I think I'm going to stop drawing there. I'm going to call it for tonight. It's 11 o'clock my time, give, give or take. And I'll take these upstairs, kind of peruse the rules a little bit. Hey, I really appreciate all you watching. What a great number of viewers for a Sunday night, school night for me. I like to think a lot of you guys don't start school probably till the end of Labor Day, but our school started last week and this week. So I got a son going tomorrow. I got to get up bright and early, take him to Panera, St. Louis Bread Company, and get some breakfast for the first day of school. So what you've been watching is the victory loss by MMP. I had three chits pulled, two German and a Russian. The Germans kind of backed up here a little bit. Uh, maybe what I should have done is pushed up here, but I do have some units coming in here in this hex. I need to figure that out too, how that works, because they will be coming on this turn. Um, so the Russians pushed here. The Germans moved back a little bit, trying to get a defense ready for Rostov. Um, get behind some of these lines here. I guess ultimately I really want to get around this stuff here, but... I need that river to snake down that way. Um, the other German was here. I, I think I didn't really pick a good chit. I should have pulled something up there, maybe done a little defense. 
uh, and the Russians on their their special uh, attack phase were able to kind of bump a couple um, Italians back and push them back this way. Um, so that was cool. And I've got uh, four more chits. I've got Stavka, first guard. So Stavka, every... Oh, that's why I want to keep these guys up here. My goodness, stop bumping this. That's why I want to keep these guys up here with these guys. So one, two, three, four... So you want to keep, so what I did there was you want to keep, well, wait a minute. So they would have moved, okay, I did that wrong. They should have only moved with their units. I can here put them with them. So third guard. So I, I, he can only move with his units, I believe. That's something I'll have to check. So this guy was stacked with no one. So he won't be able to move at all. Because you cannot activate. But Stavka, he will be able to move. I have to remember that. So Stavka allows you to activate every Russian command. Otherwise, I did not put these in the... These will never get drawn for the game, some of these. I explained that at the beginning. And I have one German left. Who is it? So I have Stavka. So I have 5th Tank Army. This guy. Well, oh, that's cool. So he can command these guys again. And I have Stavka and I have 1st Guard Army, which is up here who already kind of made a dent here. And then Romania 3. Some Romanian 3rd Army. Um, who is here? Okay. Hey, thanks a lot, everybody. You've been awesome. So, so uh, no, you're welcome for playing. Thanks all for jumping on. Yo, yo, yo. Let's see. Oh, Ardwell Slayer, man. Golly, look at all the people watching tonight. This is awesome. Another good channel. Ardwell. Lots of good channel represented here. Al Red Sox fan, sports, Ardwell Slayer, Wargaming, Al Red Sox. I already said him. Uh, I forgot the others. Uh, Counterattack, good war game videos. Uh, Fireweaver, I don't know. Let me know if you have a channel. Landsurfer, I don't know. Big E, I don't know. Muzzle Paint, I don't know. <laughs> If you guys have channels, please let us know. I'm sorry if I, I should know these things, and if I'm not subbed, I'll come and sub on you. Old Soldier, Big E. My God, there's so many great new faces for me or new avatars. Appreciate that. Um, it's been great. It's a late, and I will probably put – I'll post this up, and I'll probably do a quick recording to kind of do a summary for everybody else who wasn't here. Thanks all. Have a great night, and hope to join you sometime at least once or twice this week. It's kind of crazy. School's starting, so we'll, we'll talk to you all later. See you later.